turn our 8-1 crank here for our charter boat motor. Okay, I'm far enough along where I'm gonna prime the engine. Um, I've assembled it far enough uh, that I can put the uh, remote oil system on. Um, obviously a new oil cooler and new remote oil lines, new gaskets and stuff in the adapter. So I got the electronics and stuff kind of laid out. I know it's a mess right now, but these engines are a mess. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to prime this thing and see what happens. <laughs> There you go. Now the reason the pressure isn't so great on these eight ones, there is a. This is something I wanted to explain. I ran into this years ago. Um, there's an oil galley here for the lifter. So you see, I only had 20 psi. Well, this oil galley is blocked by the little oil pump drive. You'll see oil just gushing in out of that main lifter galley. So don't be alarmed when you do one of these, this old school way, because like I say, that oil is there to lube that drive. The oil, I don't know if I get a good shot here. See how it pours in there, right next to that shaft. I know my shaft's crooked in that, cause it's, this is Hillbilly Farm Boy, Southern Ohio, but. Like I say, that oil pump drive. Like I say, but that's okay. She's primed up and uh, we're good to go. Okay, a minute ago I was talking about the oil galley going right through this little distributor drive. Now on an 8.1, since there's no distributor, they have this little guy that goes in the intake manifold. So it's basically like a quarter of a regular Chevy distributor link and it runs off the cam and it drives the oil pump. That's what that little screwdriver drive is. But right here, see a little oil passage? That actually keeps oil inside this unit so it doesn't tie up and go to hell. So this little groove here, this big groove my thumb is, that goes into the oil galley. So um, that way it's kind of half-ass seals here and half-ass seals here. That way the oil is forced through this guy to keep oil through it so it doesn't go to hell. So uh, interesting setup and how these work. Right down in there, like I said, you can actually see the oil galley uh, in there. I've got a light. See that galley there at the 12 o'clock position? That's drilled right through the block. Uh, there's a plug on the back of the block, and that is one of the main galleys that goes and feeds the lifters in this engine. So, like I say, just a couple subtle changes from the 454, but uh, interesting nonetheless. All right, let's, uh, I just got done cleaning my injectors for my 8.1. Let's test these bad boys. Well, I get the spray right, eh? This is a very important step, you know, especially in a marine engine. You know, gas doesn't like it is in a car where you're changing it out. Now, even though this is a commercial boat, technically, since it's a charter boat, it probably gets more fuel into it than most, of, most boats, but, you know, something like this, this would ruin the engine. If these injectors don't flow right, it's game over. You know, you can detonate a piston or whatever. Now, again, this is meant for oil burning. It's got 5,000 hours on it. Those injectors are pretty solid after cleaning, so. I mean, we don't give a shit about two milliliters. I mean, that's nothing. So, but that's great. That's what we want to see. That's what these are supposed to flow, about 85 milliliters in uh, 15 seconds. So, 
Uh, we cleaned them. I, I've actually cleaned these injectors before in the past in this same boat. You know, like I say, it's got a ton of time on it. So, but like I say, we wanted to re-clean them, put new O-rings and stuff on them while we're here. So, it's all about doing the job complete. Okay, getting close on our 8.1 here, and I just want to talk about one thing, uh, the IAX system on the non-digital throttle engines. So this has a uh, 555 processor, which all Mercury's or 8.1s did. This is their own processor built by Motorola. It's actually very similar, if you're a diesel guy, to a 6-liter Ford diesel FICOM. Actually, the connectors are the same. Um, I mean, the box is physically different, but the, um, the hardware is very similar. But anyway... Um, there was an issue where they did not use the Delphi or Delco IAC. Uh, if you're a Delco old school Miffy guy, you'll know that the IAC is a four wire stepper motor, which would go right here. Well, I don't know if that is patented to Delphi or Miffy stuff and GM in general, since they've had that stepper motor circuit since the seventies on their carburetor engines. Um, but anyway, what Mercury did is they put a bypass hose Okay, that's what this cheese dick hose is. And they use a Ford style idle air valve. Well, if you're a car guy, 8-1, this is where the EGR valve would be. So they have this little adapter here where the EGR would go. Because normally on a car, you have your exhaust manifold, there would be a tube bringing the exhaust over here. And then of course, EGR, you have a vacuum. There's an internal vacuum port in here. So this controls the idle through this tube. Well, one of the problems is, is it's noisy. So, <laughs> When this thing's at idle, it'll sound terrible. So you have to put this little fuzzy muffler in. So this fuzzy muffler just gets pushed in just like that. And of course, the engine backfires, whatever blows it out, gets sucked into the engine. <laughs> I mean, it's a really cheesy deal, but if you don't put that in there, it'll sound terrible. So just an interesting note. <laughs> Like old school big block Chevrolet. 